Hey everyone, Christopher Rocchio here, author of the Sun Eater Science Fantasy series from Daw Books and junior editor at Bane Books, where I work with sci-fi and fantasy writers for the last going on six years. And today I want to tackle a question that I've seen several writers answer on and offline. I think Brandon Sanderson's addressed it over on his channel. And that is, how do I make myself write? How do I get into the writing mood? So I think this question is sort of two fronts to it. On the one hand, I think folks are asking, hey, Christopher, how do you get into the writing mood, right? How do you plan your time, schedule your day, and get through your day in such a way that lets you work on these books and get them out in a timely manner? Uh, on the other hand, I think folks are asking, hey, Christopher, I'm trying to write. Uh, how do I uh, you know, plan my day, schedule my time in such a way that helps me get this material out into the world? Do you have any advice? And I'm going to tackle both fronts of that in reverse order. I'm going to talk about what you can do first and then get to get to my day. But I also think, and the reason I asked this question in two different ways, right, uh, how do you get into the writing mood, right, versus how do I make myself write, is because I've seen a lot of writers frame this uh, in terms of mood. And as Gurney Halleck once said to Paul Atreides, mood is a thing for cattle. I do not think that if you want to be a professional writer, that you can afford to think in terms of mood. Uh, if you wanted to be a dancer, you couldn't just wait for the dancing to happen. You have to practice and you have to practice religiously. If you want to be a musician, same thing. Uh, but also if you want to be a lawyer, right, you have to practice law. You have to make writing a part of your day. I live and die by to-do lists. And the first item on every single day uh, is my word count goal for that day. It can be as low as you need it to be, right? It could just be a hundred words. And I remember reading somewhere that uh, the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, because he had a chronic pain disorder could only manage to write, you know, about a sentence a day because he's writing, a, you know, with a quill, right, too, or maybe, you know, a fountain pen or something. And that's a lot harder right, than just typing into a word processor or using speech to text, that sort of thing. So he really, really, really could not get much out of the time, but he still managed to finish his books. And it is okay. It is okay if all you accomplish in a day is a sentence. It's okay if it's a paragraph starting out. Eventually, you can work yourself up to doing 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 words a day, right? I lately have been hovering just at about 1,000 words a day, which is very slow uh, for me. But the important thing is to make writing a part of your daily routine like breakfast, like brushing your teeth, like going to the gym, which is one of those things that I struggle uh, with adding to my daily routine. So I get it. I get it. It's hard to make time. So there's an element of pacing that needs to be involved. It's okay to set smaller goals. And in pursuit of setting smaller goals, I cannot stress the importance of outlining enough. I know there are writers who don't outline. They do this all in their heads. They do it all on the fly, by the seat of their pants, off the cuff. I am not one of those writers, and I don't really think most people are. Uh, I'm not even convinced the people who claim... Uh, that they don't outline ought to be writing in that particular way. Now, I'm not saying there is a correct way to write, and you do have to figure out what methods work for you. But if something is not working, uh, one of the most common things I found that's not working for people is they're not planning. Uh, a lot of people do think that to be a writer means to be some pure muse-inspired being who's able to sit down with a blank page or a blank word processor and just go. You've done all your world building, right? Because I know people like do world building as a hobby and they talk about writing and they don't get into the actual writing part. But the problem is they have not uh, sat down and actually figured out uh, the story. They've got a very broad overarching scheme, but they don't know how all the characters fit into it. They don't know which plot beat goes where. They haven't sat down and really thought about it. So one thing you might want to consider is that you might be someone who needs to outline. If you're having, you know, writer's block issues, a lot of writer's block is simply a failure to plan, right? I write extensive outlines for my books, right? My books are about 300,000 words long, talking about first Game of Thrones book length, and my outlines are about 60, 70 pages, sometimes a little bit shorter. Um, so I treat my outline sort of like a low resolution first draft. And I think that's been very helpful uh, for me, right? My first book, I did an outline for it. it. Took me like four years to write. The second two are longer than the first one was. And I've done them in a year, more or less. And that's all down, I think, to the outlining that I've learned to do. Uh, as I say, there are some writers who can probably make do without outlines for short stories. Even I really don't use them. I'll write like a quick summary so I know what I have to do in five, 10,000 words. But uh, the odds are, if you're encountering difficulty, you may be someone who needs to plan. Uh, and that's something that I don't see a lot of writers stressing uh, to prospective writers, to aspiring writers. And I think it needs to be said more. Um, you know, it's great to be an improvisational writer, to be a discovery writer, uh, so-called. Uh, but I, I do think to a certain extent that's a false dichotomy, too, because I think folks who outline uh, are discovering 
as the outline. As I say, I think of my outline as a very low resolution first draft. I'm still having that pure, you know, you know, exploratory experience as I'm planning out the story. And the actual writing is something that I layer in in phase two as I do the first draft, right? And so I'm not trying to figure out where things fit in. I know how things fit in. Um, and being able to sit down and deal with the complexities of prose and character um, is something that's less stressful once I've gotten plot and structure out of the way, if that all makes sense. Um, again, not trying to knock people who, uh, who can write without an outline. Uh, it would be great if I could do it. It would save a lot of time. Um, upfront time at any rate. I don't know exactly how much time I do save by outlining, but it certainly takes a lot of the stress off. Uh, and the thing about books, right, is that, as I say, they're very big objects. They're very big undertakings. And so to try and, and, and swallow a book, right, uh, starting on page one and, and get your get your brain around it the way a snake gets uh, its jaws around a, a rat uh, is, is challenging. It's better to cut it into smaller pieces. And I think the outlining has been the technique by which I can chop these books into smaller pieces, make it more digestible to me as a craftsman, as an artist. I want to talk a little bit about what my ideal writing day looks like versus what's actually been happening and how I think this is causing, uh, you know, full, some problems, right? Just as a sort of model case for, for everyone else. Uh, ideally, I wake up at about 6.30 and the first thing I do is get about 100, 200 words and not that many, just enough to get my, my brain going, get my head in that space, go make breakfast. And if there's time to do a little more writing before I go into the office, uh, do that. The goal being to have maybe 500 words 700 words done before I go in. Now that hasn't happened for a long time, mostly because uh, I will instead wake up and watch a couple of YouTube videos to get the sleep out of my eyes. And by the time I've done that, it's time to go to the office. And not only have I not written, I've missed breakfast, uh, which is not great. But then I go into the office, you know, five days a week, nine to five, like so many of us. Uh, and then I come home and then uh, I'll write into the evenings. And, and uh, that is, as I've said, not ideal for me. I would much rather write in the mornings, get the writing done, uh, and then have the rest of my day free to take care of other things, right? Because uh, writing is not the only thing on these, uh, on these to-do lists. But as I say, I've been doing other things in the morning. I've been getting distracted by, uh, by my laptop, right? By, by YouTube, by social media, by checking emails and, and answering messages from people, things like that. And I need personally to uh, reestablish uh, a relationship with that first step of my day, with, with sitting down and writing first. Because as someone said, and I forget who, who the quote is from, the hardest thing is to begin. Um, once I get the ball rolling, the juice is flowing, as they say, uh, it's much easier to keep writing uh, throughout the day. And it's much easier to come back to it, to sneak a few words in over the lunch hour, right? Jump back into it in the evening and get to that 1,500, 2,000 word goalpost at the end of every day. Failing that first step, not getting it started at the beginning of the day for me is is poisonous. As I say, I'm never as confident in the work that I start at 4 p.m. as I am in the work I started at 7 a.m. Uh, and so figuring out what those hurdles are for you is going to be really important. And, and stepping back, being able to step back and figure out what it is that is stopping you from uh, getting your best work. So uh, I hope some of this has been helpful to all of you. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, please do uh, like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. If you haven't checked out my books, uh, links are in the description uh, to, to Amazon, but they're available wherever books are sold. If you want to go to check out your local indie bookstore, please do strongly encourage that you do so. Uh, as well, my newsletter is in the description. You can sign up for that and get the latest news in the Sun Eater series, learn what's coming up, learn exactly how far I am in the next book, down to the minute word counts, send out uh, lately, you know, two emails a month, but I'm going to scale that back to just one in 2021. So uh, until next time, uh, you all stay well.